What a tremendous blessing. I've been ministered to myself. Amen. Folks, I needed that. Sure did. All of it. Better get my, I need my glasses too. <laughs> Be much Bible reading without them. <laughs> it's good to see you again, all of you coming out again tonight. And uh, this is the coolest weather, of course, I've seen this year. My wife and I we hadn't quite got that up to that or down to that in North Carolina yet. We've had some cool nights, but uh, it's uh, Kills the germs, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll be in Psalm 100, the 100th Psalm tonight, and um, we'll actually be in three places here. And uh, I know that Pastor Ireland did not know what I was going to be preaching tonight, but the Lord always does. And uh, so... Psalm 100. So I hope it'll be a blessing. I tried to be the last three nights, the last three messages we preached, and I hope it's give you something to encourage you. Uh, I I remember years ago when the, the elections and they elected Bill Clinton. I think I stayed depressed for about about six months. You know, <laughs> and I thought it could never get any worse than this. Well, guess what? Yeah. <laughs> Psalm 100, a psalm of praise. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. <coughs> know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Father, give us wisdom tonight as we look to your word. We pray, Lord, that you'll speak to me tonight, Lord, and give me strength. That I might be a blessing to these, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you for this wonderful music tonight. What a blessing, Lord, to hear those songs that many folks that have suffered uh, hardships and heartaches have put down from, with pen on paper to be a blessing to the children of God. And we thank you for that. We just pray, Lord, now that your blessed will be done. We know this Bible is inspired of thee, and Lord, we know that it will speak to the inner man. And that's what we're asking tonight. Give us strength, God, that we don't have physically. And we'll praise you and thank you for all that you do. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen. I want to preach tonight on, and be ye thankful. And be ye thankful. Now, there are only three references to the word thankful as such found in your Bible. And tonight, that's what we're going to deal with. If you know anything about what's going on in our nation, and you know the nation of Israel in your Bible in the Old Testament, you know that the United States of America is following that same line that Israel did with murmuring and complaining constantly. If you, if you read much Bible in the Old Testament, you know that what got Israel in trouble with Jehovah God more than anything else was murmuring and complaining and not being thankful for what God had done for them. Amen. That's right. Israel would do something for them and then they would complain about it. I mean, God would do something for Israel, excuse me, then they would complain about it. I mean, no sooner would God provide for them than they would get angry about something else God had not provided for them as yet. And it seems like that's what America is all about tonight. For the child of God, we ought to be above that. Amen. Amen. Now folks, listen to me. The one thing, one thing that God will never, never, never bless is unthankfulness. 
Amen? Now, folks, there's some things it's hard to be thankful for. That's, I mean, they sang it tonight. All things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. Now, I believe that verse, Romans 8, 28, every bit of it, but it's hard to believe sometimes. Yeah. Amen? I know that God has a purpose for everything, and, and ever since we've been saved by the grace of God, we have seen God in action do things that we did not understand, and we've asked the question, how could God possibly uh, get the glory out of this, and how could it possibly do us good but it always does. If I could just remember that through every tribulation and trial. God never fails. Amen. The Lord never fails. Amen. This is one of the places tonight where we see uh, the word thankful in Psalm 100. And I want you to notice with me tonight in verse number uh, 4. He says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Every time we walk through the door of this local church, you are to be thankful that the church is here and that the lights are on and that the heat is on and that God's people are present. Amen. 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 I mean, folks, listen. That you, we strengthen one another in the Lord and in our faith through the Word of God and the singing of the songs of Zion. And you, you, you just, I mean, folks, you can't make it on your own. Amen. I mean, I know you've got the Lord, but the Lord saved more than one person. Amen. And He did that so we could have fellowship and we could strengthen one another in the Lord. Amen. And you folks have strengthened me tonight with this music. I want you to know that. Amen. 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 Now look at it. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving. And His courts with praise. And be thankful unto Him and bless His name. Why should we be thankful unto God? Well, first of all, look at verse 5. For the Lord is good. Amen. That's abiding goodness, folks. It didn't say the Lord was good at one time. It doesn't say that God was good to Israel and was not good to us. Amen. If I had what I deserved, I'd have been in hell before I turned 15. The way I lived. And I'm not proud of that. And no sense taking the lid off the sewer. Everybody knows what it smells like. That's one thing I get disturbed about sometimes about people. And I don't know what if they're not thinking about what they're doing. But we don't have to get up and drag out our sordid past. Amen. Young people don't need to hear that. Right. Amen. I mean, I, I won't, you know, if they ask me a question about what I did, this, that, and the other. Uh, I might tell some, some things, but I don't go into any details, and neither should anybody who standing up giving a testimony. Amen. Amen. Everybody knows. Everybody knows what sin is. Right. But listen, God is good. Now take your Bible, and look at Hebrews chapter five. You say, "Why is God good?" Well, you'll see it in Hebrews chapter five. God is good, and the devil is bad. <laughs> Amen. God is good and the devil is evil. Amen. Amen. You say prove it, okay? Notice in Hebrews chapter 5. Chapter 5 and verse number 13. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. That's maturity. That's to be complete in Christ. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern, discern both good and evil. Look at those words and see how they resemble God and devil. Yeah. Amen. Because that's where the word good comes from. It comes from God. And that's where the word evil comes from. It comes from devil. Amen. So God gives us the ability to discern between both good and evil. And the way we do that is through the Word of God. Having our senses exercised. That's a daily thing. So God is what? God is good. Not just was good. He is. You have trouble believing that sometimes? The old flesh don't, don't believe that. The flesh don't like that. But that inner man now, that's who God ministers to. And thank God for that. And by strengthening the inner man, our outer man is renewed day by day. How about that? 
So God is good, verse 5. Not only that, look at this. Let's go back in our text in, in Psalm 100. In Psalm 100. It says, For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. So we have everlasting mercy. That means it's never ending. Amen. Amen. Now, folks, I, you say, well, God gets to get, God, God, God is long suffering, but his, his uh, long suffering runs out, but he's still merciful. Yes. He's merciful in that he gives a person an opportunity to repent and get right with God. Amen. God didn't have to do that. God could have wiped people out and not give them any opportunity to repent, but he did. Amen. And thank God, his mercy, his mercy is everlasting mercy, especially for the child of God. Amen. That's a fact. Everlasting mercy. Not only that, not only is it never ending, but look at this. And his truth endureth to all generations. Mm. I mean, it lasts forever. Yeah. You're never going to run out of truth with God. Now, folks, listen. You can't have truth in things that contradict the Word of God. Mm -hmm. That's error. But in this book, you have truth. It's not part truth. It's not three quarters truth. It's all truth. Amen. Amen. In this Bible. And I submit to you this evening, there's no contradictions in this Bible. And those that appear to be contradiction, contradictions always have an explanation. And in the minds and hearts of men is where the contradiction is. Amen. But with God, there is no contradiction. So... Be ye thankful for a glorified God, excuse me, for abiding goodness, for everlasting mercy, and for enduring truth. Isn't that good? Yes, sir. I mean, folks, if this world stands a hundred more years, two hundred more years, and of course it will in the millennial reign, but I'm talking about as it stands right now, and I hope not, I hope the Lord gets us out of here soon, but if it does, truth will still endure. And the world doesn't like truth. Amen? Have you run into that yet? <laughs> the world does not appreciate truth. They don't. Now look at this. Take your Bible. That's one place that you find the word thankful. The things that we ought to be thankful for. But look at our New Testament in Romans chapter 1. And see what we can be thankful for. You say, Brother Mitch, things to be thankful for in Romans 1... Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, we can. Romans chapter 1. And I want you to notice in verse number 20. Romans 1, 20. Now, folks, everybody sitting here that reads the Bible knows what Romans 1 is dealing with. So we're going to look what, uh, what, how, what we are to avoid by seeing what God gives us here in verse 20. For the invisible things of Him of the creation of the world are clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Look at it now. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Look at this. Neither were thankful. How about that? Neither were thankful. Now notice but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like, made like to corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Well, my goodness, if you look at that real close, that could be, let's see now, uh, made like corruptible man, that could be Santa Claus, yeah. Amen. And the birds, well, that could be uh, the turkey on Thanksgiving. Yeah. I mean, thank God for the turkey, but you, that's not the important thing. The important thing is the Thanksgiving. Yeah. Well, look at this. And four-footed bees, how about that bunny rabbit on Easter? Yeah. You ever see a bunny rabbit lay eggs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, you know what all that's about. But look at this. And creeping things. Well, we just had the creeping things holiday, didn't we? Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Right there in Romans chapter 1. <laughs> it is. But you know something? What we can be glorified for, I mean, what we can be uh, glad of, look at here. 
They glorified him not as God. We can be thankful for a glorified God. Take your Bible and look at 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. I am glad tonight that God Almighty is glorified. Amen. I'm glad that my Savior sits at the right hand of the Father in the glorified body. Amen. Amen. And we're going to be like unto him when God changes us. Amen. Look at 1 Peter chapter 4, verse number 12. The Bible says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. And on your part he is evil spoken of, but on, on their part is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. Amen. So when you and I suffer, for the cause of Christ, it glorifies Him. Yes. And you know something, folks? That's what life is all about. Amen. Now, thank God God gave us the things that He gave us to enjoy. Families, as I said the other night, and food and fellowship and all these things. But this is a hard life sometimes. But when you stop and realize that the things you and I do for the cause of Christ will glorify God Almighty, it's going to be worth it all pretty soon. Amen. I believe that. I believe that. Amen. So we can be thankful for a glorified God because in Romans 1, they glorified Him not as God. Look back over there in Romans 1 again. And look at this. Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. You know what we can be thankful for tonight, folks? We can be thankful for uh, downcast imaginations. Yeah, Do you remember the other night I quoted the verse over in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5? Casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. You know what we can be thankful for? That our, that our imaginations can be cast down. That we don't have to be controlled by evil imagination. Amen. Now, I think I mentioned this the other night. And I can say if you, don't, if you don't mind another personal testimony. But as a young man before the age of 18. Before I trusted Christ as my Savior. When I was preparing this message. I went back. And I was trying to think, and, and that's hard to do when you're 57 years old. It's hard to think about what happened before you were 18. But I tried to remember, and when I go to bed at night, when my wife and I pray that we kiss each other good night, and we still do that after 37 years of marriage, amen. Uh, listen, when I would go to bed, the last thought on my mind before I go off to sleep is the Lord. And when I wake up in the morning, the first thought on my mind is the Lord. Lord, thank you for letting me live through another night. A lot of folks don't. But I can remember as a young man, I cannot remember ever having a spiritual thought in my body, in my head. And you know something? Going back and thinking about that is very painful. It's very heartbreaking to think that I was raised in church until about 11 years old and I got out of church and was did this, didn't this hardly go to church until I got saved, I can't remember having a spiritual thought. Everything that I thought, every imagination of my heart and mind was only evil continually. You say, why, Brother Mitch? I didn't have, the, I didn't have anything in me to do any different. You say, well, how is a young man or a young woman, how do I do that? Well, it's only, not only a young man or a young woman, I'm going to tell you folks, it don't get any easier the older you get. Right. I thought it would, but it don't. Because you got more than the devil wants the older you get and the longer you've been saved. But take your Bible and look at Philippians chapter 4. You say, Brother Mitch, how do you do this? Well, the Bible gives us instruction. The Bible tells us how to get victory over this wicked, wicked imagination. 
Philippians 4, verse 8. Philippians 4, verse 8. Very familiar passage of Scripture. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. So our theme here is things, right? Whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Things. You see that? Now the theme, the subject is things. Now look. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of war, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased. And I know how to abound. Everywhere look at it. And in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry. Both to abound and to suffer need. Look at it. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. That's changed in every version of the Bible on the market. They change it. I can do all things through Christ. Uh, through through Christ, who strengtheneth me? Uh uh. Uh uh. They're destroying the context of the verse when they do that. The context is things. Look at it. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. In other words, the things which strengthen me, I can do through Christ. Don't change the verse. That's the context of the verse. We're talking about things. And God said you can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth you. That's King James Bible. That's the proper reading. You change the reading, you destroy the context of the verse. Amen. 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 So listen, we can by doing these things, think on things that are pure and lovely and of good report. That's the way you cast down your imaginations. Amen. Young person or old person. That's the way you cast them down. Now, that might be harder to do if you got cable TV or satellite TV or the wrong videos or, you know, when you're all on the wrong websites on the internet. But I mean, folks, listen, because that stuff is this in it. I mean, it just gets in your mind and it stays there. So you might want to, you know, monitor what you watch. Amen? Amen. Shake your head, folks. Amen. Amen. Folks, the commercials now are more filthy than the programs are. Amen. Amen. And folks, if you, you ever notice how we've been watching something, all of a sudden the commercial come on, and before you can change the channel, before you can turn your eyes away, they put that commercial right there. They do that for a reason. So you'll sit there and watch it. Amen. Amen. Amen, Brother Mick. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Downcast imagination. I thank God that I don't have to be controlled by my imagination. Not only that, look back in our text. But I can thank God, I can thank God for something else. Look at Romans chapter 1. Again, a lot in that chapter. I got a message I'll preach out of Romans 1, how things continually get worse and worse, and I call it the point of no return. But anyway, look at this. They became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. You know why it took 18 years for me to trust Christ? Because I had a dark heart. My heart was darkened. My sin. You said, well, what can you do about that? Look at Psalm 18. Psalm 18. Psalm 18, verse number 28. I like this. Psalm 18, verse 28, the Bible says, For thou wilt light my candle, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. You know why these people in Romans chapter 1 became reprobates? You know why these people in Romans chapter 1 were led down that primrose path to destruction and where they ended up? To where they were given a reprobate mind? 
is because they have a dark heart. And the only way you can have an enlightened heart is through the Spirit of God, through salvation by the grace of God. Amen. That's Amen. why this world is as wicked as it is. People with reprobate minds running things. And folks, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And you read 2 Timothy, the book of 2 Timothy, that's your last day's scenario. You say, prove that. I'm going to very shortly. Number three, folks, and I'm done. Look over in Colossians chapter 3. So you've got the word thankful in Psalm 100. You've got the word thankful in Romans chapter 1. And you've got the last time the word thankful as such is found in your Bibles in Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. In Colossians chapter 3, the Bible says in verse number 15, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. You reckon the Lord wants us to be thankful? Yes, sir. yes He does. I'm thankful for the food that I ate today. It was so graciously provided for us. I'm thankful for the help that I do have. Amen. I'm thankful my wife didn't break her leg when she fell down through stairs. Amen. It could have been a lot worse. I'm thankful that, uh, that, that, that God let us be here tonight. That you've got this church. I'm thankful that you're here. I'm thankful that God saved me. And I'm not headed to a devil's hell. And I know that. Amen. Look at this. What can we be thankful for? Colossians 3 verse 15. First of all, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. We can be thankful for the ruling peace of God. We do not have to be ruled by turmoil all the time. We can be ruled by the peace of God. Amen. That's what God said. That's easier said than done sometimes. We have to submit under God. Like they sang in the song. You know, I mean, I mean, you, you submit under God and those things that happen, they happen for a purpose. Amen. I'm glad one of these days, I mean, not now, the Lord said, but afterwards. We'll understand. We'll understand the, the ruling peace of God. Not only that, look at this. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Now, when you got, when, when you're a saved individual, you either got the Lord ruling in your heart or you're on the throne of your heart. Yes, mm, that's right. They know something. I'm a terrible monarch. Amen. <laughs> I, I, listen, folks, I, I can't rule my spirit too well, but the Lord can, and the Lord does. And he has now for 38 years. And every time I've ever gotten in trouble is when I've took God off the throne of my heart and put Mitch on the throne of my heart. No matter what, what circumstance, I've always got in trouble. And every child of God will. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Now look at this. In which ye are called in one body, in one body, be ye thankful, and be ye thankful. You know something? Tonight, you are a manifestation of the body of Christ into a local church assembly. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to heaven with you folks, whether you like me or not. <laughs> I hope you do, but that doesn't matter. Whether you like me or not, I'm going. I'm here. I'm in the body. Amen. You're in the body, we're going together. Amen. You say, well, I don't like you. Well, we'll have a glorified body then. Maybe you will. How, how about that? <laughs> but listen, the calling in the one body, God put you here for a purpose. In this local assembly, because you are children of God, you're in Christ's body, and you're obeying God by being here in this local assembly. Christ died for the church. Amen. He sure did. Now, I know there's a difference between the local body and the local church. I know that. I know all. I mean, the, the, the body of Christ. I know that. But folks, listen. I contend that those that are in the body, those that are in the body, and I don't call it the universal church. That's Catholicism's term. But folks, listen. It's the body of Christ. Now, you've got a lot of people that attends a local church that are not in the body. <laughs> They might think they are, but they're not. I saw some of them today on that video. There's a, there's a pile of them 
They might be in a local church. They might be in an emerging church or whatever. You, uh, uh, we got a bunch in our area. We got uh, uh, we got the uh, Cornerstone, and we've got oh my goodness, we got High Rock, the High Rock Church. <laughs> I mean, they're springing up all over the place. Yes, sir. And that's an offshoot of the Southern Baptist Convention. What that is. But listen, folks. Christ died for the church. Don't you think it's pretty important? Thank God for this local assembly. Now listen, in conclusion, that's the three places. Now, in the Bible, the Bible is replete with references to thank, thanks, thanked, thankfulness, thanking, thank offerings, and 30 references to thanksgiving or thanksgivings. You even got two references to the word unthankful. Amen? And that's where we're going to close out tonight. Look in 2 Timothy chapter 3. That's where we're at in 2012. This is the most unthankful generation I've ever seen in my life. You know why God blessed your mothers and grandmothers and grandmothers and grandfathers and great-grandmothers and great-grandfathers? You know why God blessed them? Because they were thankful for what God gave them. It may not have been much, but they were thankful for it. They didn't, they didn't dig into their food when you put it on the table like a bunch of hogs going to a slop. They were thankful Amen. for what God, for what God gave them. Amen. Amen. And they prayed and asked the Lord to bless it. And God did bless it. I go to restaurants today and I see people get a pile of food. And I mean, they'll dig into it. I mean, they look like a bunch of ravening wolves. And then when they get through, they leave more on the plate than, than some, some people eat in a week. You want to get me upset? I know, boy. I see that all the time, and it really bothers me. If I don't, if I'm not going to eat it, I don't get out on my plate, and I tell, try everything I can to eat what I've got on my plate. He probably look at me and tell him, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> actually, I don't, I don't, I don't. I'm just fluffy. I'm not really fat. Look <laughs> <laughs> at Second Timothy chapter three, folks. We'll close out here. Are you thankful tonight? I heard some of you express your thankfulness. We've all got Amen. something to be thankful for. Amen. Amen. I, I know of people that every breath they take is painful. Can you breathe tonight? Can you inhale and exhale without hurting? There's some people that can't. Amen. I thought that I was in pretty bad shape, physically, because of the surgery and all that I had. I had a lady come to church here. I wasn't going to tell this, but I am. I had a lady come to church. Some of the guys, they met her, her and her husband at uh, Hampton Inn down in uh, Concord, just seated next to us, they invited her to church, and her husband came. This woman weighed about 120 pounds. She uh, used to weigh 330. Now, and she got stomach cancer. They had to remove her stomach completely. The pull part of her intestines up to make her a stomach. She takes 120 pills a day just to live and still has cancer. And she she looked she looked like she was not long for this world when she came to church, but she did. And I just went home and wept. I said, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, and I am. I am sorry for whining, sorry for complaining. One of these days it's going to be worth it all, folks. Look at this last day, young people. You want to see? You want to see a picture of the last days? This is it right here. You say, well, brother Mitch, this was written in 66 A.D. I know when it was written, but it's a prophecy of the last days. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud. See that word proud? Folks, do you know that every reference to pride or proud in a King James Bible is an evil reference? Everyone. 
So we really should avoid using that word. You say, well, Brother Mitch, well, if, if my child comes home from school with straight A's, what should I tell them? Well, I, I never experienced that personally. <laughs> but uh, uh, what, do the, what, what, do the, what did the God say about his son when he was baptized? This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. pleased. He didn't say, I'm proud of him. I'm pleased with him. Amen. That's King James Bible. Look it up. Check it out. I've got a whole study I do on that about pride, pride and proud. Haughty. All of it's evil. Every reference in the King James Bible is evil. So say, I'm pleased with you, son. Or I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with you, daughter. Amen. Amen. Now look, there it is right there. Proud. Proud. Proud is the proudest generation I've been. Folks, listen, people won't go they won't get saved because they're proud. They're too proud. Yeah. Blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. That, that's a lot more than just sodomy. Folks, that deals with mothers throwing their kids in garbage cans. I just heard another case of that recently. Heard a case one time about a young girl couldn't get a babysitter, so she threw her child down the laundry chute in the apartment building. Without natural affection, folks, that's not natural. Amen. You got devils incorporated there, and I didn't say demons. Yeah. You got devils incorporated there. Yeah. Without natural affections, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, they have no self control whatsoever, they're controlled by the devil, fierce. Despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And look what the Lord says, from such, turn away. That's the instruction that God gave. Now listen, if that word unthankful is in that list, and it is, don't you think we ought to turn away from being unthankful? Amen. That's right. Amen. As hard as you have it, and some folks have it harder than others. I lamented this week over not having the compassion I should have over the folks in the storm up in New York. A lot of saved people. But there's a lot of people that were not saved and they don't have a clue what to do or who to call on. We ought to pray for them. Amen. If you can't go and help, pray for them. But especially your brothers and sisters in Christ. And there are some, believe it or not, in New York. <laughs> Amen. Brother Vince Massa lives right there on, on Manhattan in the Connecticut side. Yes, sir. Folks, are you thankful? Do you have something tonight to be thankful? Are you ever unthankful? We ought to ask God to forgive us if we are. Amen. And be ye thankful. That's the message tonight. Let's stand. Pretty easy to slip into the unthankfulness, isn't it? God's been good to us. Amen. Amen. You're saved here tonight. God's been good to you. You live in this country. God's been good to you. He really has. We need to be thankful. There's nobody in the world that should be more thankful than a Christian. A Christian that lives in this country. The freedoms that we have. The wealth that we have. Amen? God's been good to us. You ever get unthankful? What you need to do, you need to repent of that. You need to repent of that. Brother, why don't you sing if the Lord spoke to you tonight, why don't you come? The elder's open. Let's turn to him number two.